Ladies and gentlemen, how's it going? Once again, I'm your boy Neff from Nest Tech Fits. Today we're checking out an HP Compact 2510P. I say HP Compact because the actual name is Compact, but it's uh, from HP. From back in the day, one HP purchase compact in my opinion hp has never been the same since i i was pretty sure it was a good name before compact uh was purchased by it. anyways in here we have an intel core 2 duo at uh, u7600 1.2 gigahertz um 533 megahertz l2 cache that's two megabytes and yeah once again three gigabytes of ram even though it came with two i upgraded that so let's take a look. Oh, guys, the hard drive on this thing is only 4,200 RPM. It's got an 80 gigabyte hard drive, so it can definitely support Windows 10, or at least that's the theory. Let's get into this stuff. I want to see if it can actually support it. Now, surprisingly, I could actually get this thing to boot off a USB hard disk. Usually stuff this old, I have to use a CD or a DVD ROM, but thank goodness it'll actually take. Let's see how long it takes. Okay, well that's a hopeful sign. Okay, so I'm going to set a clock for 12 o'clock. That's a train clock, a conductor's clock, so it rests on its side. Trust me, that is 12. It belonged to my great-grandpappy. Let's get it started. Lucky enough for us, it actually does pick up the hard drive. And now we start to play the waiting game. So yeah, I had this thing on Windows XP for the longest time so I could have an XP system just in case. Never ended up needing it, and then when I needed it, the hard drive totally crashed out on me. So I had to order up another hard drive. It's a very particular, very small drive for this unit. And uh, you know what? Let's see if it takes Windows 10. 15 minutes after the original install, we have done our first reboot. Oh, okay, so we're just over the hour point with this unit. We have Windows installed. We have all of the updates going. The CPU is starting to throttle a little bit. Man, this thing gets hot. I had to put the fan in on it. Here we can see that we have a Mobile Intel Express chipset family video card. And then, oh man, we got a whole bunch of things missing that didn't pick up. Base system device, PCI simple serial port. Those, that's not usually such a worry. PCI sim simple communications controller and uh, an unknown now where do we got the chip the processor unit is right here of course we got dual core uh, operating at 1.2 gigahertz let's throw a benchmark at this bad boy as usual we're going to be using passmark benchmark 10 for this oh wow I've never seen these planes go this slowly under one frame per second that's just harsh yeah I don't think Grand Theft Auto 5 will work on this unit for some reason oh wow it didn't even put up with the direct X 10 it just skipped right by the rest of them <laughs> I got a memory test error on this thing because it doesn't have enough memory for the test very nice 52. I'm kind of surprised that it even got that high. I thought it uh, I thought it might actually have just one or two. Couldn't do all the tests, but that's okay. So that's interesting. There's no way I'm going to be able to run Grand Theft Auto on here, guys. You just don't even ask. and Because uh, everyone always asks about that. No, Fortnite will also not work on here. Uh, I think that's about it. But there is one thing that I would like to show you guys. And that's how slow it is. At times it feels like the Raspberry Pi version of Windows 10 uh, is about as fast as this. But then again, at the same time, this feels faster than my uh, web book or netbook. You guys remember, remember netbooks way back in the day? Man, those things were cheap. Let's take a look at the hard drive. Man, will you check out that hard drive? Look how small and cute. This is a Lego man. That's a Lego man for comparison. It's a very specific hard drive. I think... HPs are the only ones this will work on and only particular units. Anyways, before I sign off, let's flip this unit around and we'll see what kind of ports it has. This had something special on it where you could plug a remote control into it. Actually, you press a button, the remote control would pop out, and then you would be able to control it with infrared. This unit had an infrared sensor on there. DVD drive, which was a big new thing back then. USB, dial up, dial up. 
And then, of course, Cat5, always good to have that. VGA, uh, docking station, USB, and headset times two. Anyways, that was an interesting experience, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for coming with me on that adventure. Like and subscribe if you like this stuff. Always appreciate it. And as always, folks, take care of each other, will you?